so my session today is called Improving Your SBFX Development Process with Environment Variables. Uh, thank you, Vesa, for making the title a lot more sophisticated th than I had originally submitted. I think originally I said me show environment thing. Um, so that's much better. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is actually recommended by, oops, if we can, all right, I'm going to use my keyboard, uh, is recommended by two out of three SPFX developers. So this is going to be useful to you if you're talking about, uh, you know, work if you're working in a team and you're working with multiple developers who use different uh, URLs for their development tenant. Uh, it's also for anyone who's sharing their code, people who are writing samples and things like that. Um, you know, obviously, if you're sharing your code and you're sharing a sample, you probably don't want to show your tenant in uh, your code when you're sharing it with other people. And uh, probably people who are working by themselves or not really sharing their code, or maybe Bo, uh, those people would not really care about these kinds of this kind of feature. But uh, let's talk about how to use environment variables. So normally in your SharePoint uh, framework project, you'll have in the config folder, you'll have something called serve.json. And the recommended behavior here is to go set your initial page uh, and put the URL that you use for your environment. And then the cool thing about that is when you type uh, gulp serve, it serves your sample. It goes to the page that you specified in the initial page and uh, you get to test your web part. You get to debug it and do cool stuff like that. But let's talk about a team working scenario here where you've got maybe a whole bunch of developers, you know, dev one, dev two, dev three. They all have a different SharePoint URL. So dev one.sharepoint.com, uh, dev two, dev three, and so on and so forth. And then let's pretend that you also have a uh, integration environment. Maybe it's a it's a separate dev tenant, or maybe it's a separate site where you test your things. Uh, so in this case, I'm using kutosodev.sharepoint.com. Uh, maybe you have a separate environment for QA and production. So how do you uh, address that? How do you work with that if you're sharing code and you're you know putting code in source control and things like that? You don't want to be changing this every single time. Um, so one option, obviously, is to type gulp serve dash dash no browser. That works. Um, then you you know it launches as gulp serve, and then you go to your your own um, you know browser and you hit the the workbench URL, and you'll be able to get your your web part in in test mode, right? You'll be able to play with it. Uh, but these scenarios kind of become a little bit more complicated when you try to uh, debug your web part, for example. And if we look at the code sharing scenarios, right, we'll see uh, we always end up having things like this, like enter, enter your SharePoint site, right? And if you're not paying attention, you start gulp serve and it gives you an error, you can't find it. And then if you're like me, you're probably spending a lot of time uh, trying to figure out why your web part is broken when it's really that you're navigating to the wrong URL. Now, the SPFX team is constantly improving things. And they're always adding new features, cool features. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to keep up. And sometimes it's hard to pay attention to all the announcements when they do so many cool things. So in SharePoint Framework 117, in the release notes, they snuck in something, something that I think is going to be very useful. If we look in the release notes, ooh, it got blurry. Uh, let's see if we can clear this up. They added something called ability to use SPFX serve tenant domain OS environment variables for serve configurations. And what it says is that you can actually go in your operating system, set an environment variable, and specify the domain or the site URL uh, in your configuration, and you can use it across your SPFX solutions. And then anywhere that you need to use uh, in the, the, the page URL, then you can actually put squiggly tenant domain um, as a placeholder, and it will automatically replace it in the variable. So let's talk about that. So again, you have an environment variable uh, in your operating system called SPFX serve 
tenant domain. I'm not reading the underscores, by the way. Um, and then in your configuration, you actually just get to put tenant domain between squiggly brackets in your configuration. So how would this look like? If I go to my serve.json, you get to see here that I have the tenant domain. Now, the one thing I should I should make clear is that the the default behavior is to have they already include the HTTPS and the under already include the underscore layout and workbench uh, in the URL. So really, all you would be doing here is putting your SharePoint domain, right? So mine is hbdemos.sharepoint.com. That's all you will put there. Now. You can also agree with your team that your environment variables could include the HTTPS and the, the specific URL name if you wanted to. You're allowed to do that. But the one thing is if you're going to share that code with people outside the, the team, uh, if you're going to be sharing samples, I would recommend that you always stick to the standard of leaving the HTTPS and leaving the underscore layout slash, work, slash workbench that ASBX so that it's just consistent for everybody. Now, if you're in Windows, how do you set up your environment variable, especially if you don't have uh, administrative privileges? Uh, you, in your start menu, you search for environment. You'll see a giant button here that says edit the environment variables. And then it'll bring you an old um, dialog box uh, from previous versions of Windows, apparently. Uh, and you'll have a environment variable button in the lower right corner. You just get to go to uh, the environment variable, and then uh, you'll see that you have a few environment variables already set up. You just click next to add a new environment variable. This is where you would paste. Come on. This is where you would paste the in this box right here. You would paste spfx underscore serve underscore tenant domain, and then in the value you would put your um, your, your tenant, right? Your tenant domain. Again, best practice is don't use the full URL, just use the tenant domain unless you agree as a team to do this. You click OK, and on your next session, it will actually use that environment. Now, one trick I found is if you just run Explorer, um, it'll actually refresh that. So you type Explorer, it refreshes that. Now, you can actually do that also using uh, in Windows. You can use your command line to do this. That works in either uh, DOS or PowerShell. You can do set X, uh, SPFX serve to tenant domain, and then the value that you want to put. But it does require admin uh, privileges to do that, unfortunately. Now, the cool thing is once you've done that, again, you just do gulp serve, and it will go directly to your tenant. And you'll see it's kind of cool. It just puts in the value that you're looking for. I know it looks a little bit blurry. Uh, now, you might say, well, what if I'm testing different environments, right? What if I'm, uh, again, testing my, my dev environment and then I want to do QA and I want to do things like that? Oh, yes. And for those of you, you can also do this in uh, Bash and, uh, and Linux. And um, it's just the process is slightly different. Uh, to do so, but uh, pretty much all the major operating systems that where you can develop SPFX support uh, environment variables as well. Um, and I apologize, I work for Microsoft. I'm talking about Windows. Um, now, if you wanted to actually set up the variable um, temporarily because you want to test it somewhere else, of course, you could go and change the serve.json configuration. Uh, but that can be annoying. Um, you can actually just say set instead of set X, and set will set that value temporarily for your session. Uh, in Windows, you would do that. In PowerShell, you would use uh, environment SPFX tenant domain equals the value. Um, now, there is a cool trick that you can do is you can you can actually combine these commands together. So if you wanted to temporarily um, serve a specific domain, you can actually write the command here where you say, I'm, my environment is this URL and gulp serve. And what it will do is for that command, it will run in that um, in that URL for you. And then when you're done with that, that environment uh, variable will be reset to 
uh, your your standard environment variable, which is very cool. And you can imagine, obviously, by doing this, you can actually start playing with your gulp command to do this kind of stuff. But that's a whole different conversation. All right, so let's try to um, wrap this up here. You might also say that, well, wait a minute, I'm using a, a, a remote container to actually develop. It's like you and I practice this presentation because it, you can actually go to your dev container.json. And in the dev container.json for your remote containers, you can actually say, you can add this, this in here, which says the remote environment variables, uh, these remote environment variables will be promoted. So what you can say is, I want this environment variable, SPFX serve tenant domain, to be pre-populated by my local environment, which is very cool, because then you can just start a remote container, do gulp serve, it will automatically go to your uh, development tenant. Okay, one last little bit here, uh, because if you're working as a developer and you have your own developer tenant and you have your, your work tenant, you might be struggling with having to log in and you might be using things like incognito mode or in private mode, uh, but there's a better way to do this that will work way better for this. Um, and I'm using Edge here, but you could do this in Chrome as well. Uh, you'll notice that in the upper left corner, sometimes it's in the upper right corner, it depends on uh, where Microsoft feels like that day, uh, but you'll see that you have a kind of a profile here and it'll say work or personal or something like that. But uh, what you can do is you can actually go to your browser and if you click on your little browser profile thingy, uh, you can actually go click on other profiles and then set up a new work profile. When you do that, it'll prompt you to log in. So you'll say sign in to sync your data. If you don't want to sign in to sync your data, that's fine. But what I do like to be able to do is any the any um, workstation that I work on, I know that when I log in on that profile, all my history, my bookmarks, my everything, my, my preferences are configured and um, synchronized. So I will skip you uh, or spare you the part where I'm logging in here. But once my profile is created, it's going to have a name like profile three. You can actually click on the little profile settings to change your profile name. So do edit. You can rename it. So let's say I'm going to say this is my Contoso environment. You can pick a gratuitous image if it if it if if you enjoy to do so, or you can even sync with your uh, actual uh, company profile image. But once that's done, one of the cool things you can do is if you scroll down a little bit under profile preferences, right here, there you go. You can actually go in and you can say, I'm going to add a profile preference. So I'm going to say anything that's got contoso.sharepoint.com or dev1.sharepoint.com, whatever you want, you can say switch my profile to this browser profile. And the cool thing about that is when you do gulp serve, and let's actually go do that. So you see here, I have my work profile um, already showing on the browser. If I do gulp serve, and I had to speed it up, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but when you do gulp serve, it actually launches immediately, in my case, my HB demo environment where I can actually uh, test my web part. So this is a cool way to work with teams, to share your code. Uh, and to really accelerate your development process, especially if you're using application lifecycle management and automation and things like that, uh, because you're never hard coded your URLs, you're using environment variables to do so. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you everyone for your time.